I was sent to a video of a congressman, Mike Pence, who went on about how evolution is only a theory, and we should be teaching other theories about the origin of life, including intelligent divine creation. Let's take a look at what he has to say. Mr. Speaker, I've always been interested in origins. Even though my training is in the law and in history, it has uh, ever been an avocation of mine to contemplate and to study uh, the origins of man and of life here on Earth. You know, it's been mine too. I took a few courses on the evolution of life on this planet and found them fascinating, but I'm by no means an expert. Let's face it, anyone who's watched any of my videos knows I'm a bit of an idiot. That's why I turn to the people who have dedicated their lives to study these things when I make my videos. I think it's best to look to the people who know what they're talking about. So, maybe as a lawyer and a politician, you should turn to biologists if you want to understand biology. And many theories of origins have been propounded throughout our nation's history. 1859, a sincere biologist returned from the Galapagos Islands and wrote a book entitled The Origins of Species, in which uh, he did then, Charles Darwin, offered a theory uh, of the origin of species, which we've come to know as evolution. Not exactly. I hate to be nitpicky. But specifically, Darwin did not come up with the idea of evolution. Before him, people knew that animals changed, but what they didn't know was how or why they changed. Darwin came up with the theory of natural selection, where beneficial mutations are passed on because they allow organisms a better chance to survive and breed. On the other hand, organisms with detrimental ones were less likely to breed. This was a theory supported by evidence and did not need to invoke an intelligent creator. Charles Darwin never thought of evolution as anything other than a theory. He hoped that someday it would be proven by the fossil record, but did not live to see that, nor have we. The most famous transitional fossil, Archaeopteryx, was first discovered in 1861, only two years after the initial publication of Origin of Species. Since then, thousands of different transitional fossils have been found to lend credence to the theory of evolution. Here's just a partial list of transitional forms. That should be enough to qualify as evidence. 1925, in the famous Scopes Monkey trial, this theory made its way through litigation into the classrooms of America, and we all have seen the consequence over the last 77 years. Evolution not taught as a sincere theory of biologists, but rather, Mr. Speaker, taught as fact. That's because it's a fact that populations change over time. It's a fact that has been demonstrated over and over again. Our best explanation for the diversity of life on this planet that has any evidence behind it is natural selection, and that is the theory that's taught. And lest anyone listening in would doubt that, we can all see in our mind's eye that grade room classroom we all grew up in with the linear depiction of evolution just above the chalkboard. There's the little monkey crawling on the grass. There's the Neanderthal with his knuckles dragging, and then there's Mel Gibson standing in all of his glory. Mel Gibson? That's what you view as the pinnacle of human evolution? It is what we have been taught that man proceeded and evolved along linear lines. That's not exactly what happened, but rather a simplification as to what we understand. The details behind evolutionary theory are actually quite complex. The monkey to man drawings you mentioned are only a tiny fraction of the history of humanity. It's to illustrate the change our ancestors went through, but is not, and is not meant to be, the entire story. Now comes a new find by paleontologists in the newspapers all across America. A new study in Nature magazine. Six to seven million year old skull has been unearthed, the Torme skull, and it suggests that human evolution was actually, according to a new theory, human evolution was taking place, and I'm quoting now, all across Africa and on the earth, and the earth was once truly, and I quote, a planet of the apes. The Earth is still a planet of the apes. Guess what? We are apes. Our most recent ancestors were apes, and so are we. Yes, new discoveries may change our understanding of the timeline of human evolution, but it doesn't change that the evidence shows that we have descended from a common ancestor of modern apes. And, as I said, we are still apes. On which nature was experimenting with many human-like creatures. 
paleontologists are excited about this, Mr. Speaker, but no one's pointing out that the textbooks, I guess, will need to be changed because the old theory of evolution taught for 77 years in the classrooms of America as fact is suddenly replaced by a new theory, or I hasten to add, I'm sure we'll be told, a new fact. Scientists love new facts. Most scientists are fascinated with the world and want to understand it correctly. New facts means getting closer to the actual truth. They don't hide from facts, but embrace them, and facts that update our understanding of the world are to be cherished. We should always admit that we could be wrong, and strive to be as right in our understanding as possible. If a fact would bring down an established theory, that would mean it would be getting rid of an incorrect theory, something scientists would want. They don't want to hold on to erroneous ones. And yes, textbooks should be changed when new information comes along that improves our understanding of the world. Are you suggesting that maps shouldn't be redrawn when borders are changed and new countries are founded? Well, the truth is, it always was a theory, Mr. Speaker. And now that we've recognized evolution as a theory, uh, I would simply and humbly ask, uh, can we teach it as such? Okay, maybe I should have asked this earlier, but do you even know what a scientific theory is? It's not the same as a colloquialism of a guess. In scientific terms, that would be more of a hypothesis. A theory in the scientific community is an explanation supported by known facts and observations that is able to make accurate predictions. We can observe changes between organisms, with the better able to survive having a better chance to survive. And we have correctly predicted where we would find certain fossil structures. And can we also consider teaching other theories of the origin of species, like the theory that was believed in by every signer of the Declaration of Independence. Yes, but the signers of that document describing their desire for independence also felt that owning other human beings as property was an acceptable act. They were very progressive for their day, but there is no reason to assume that their beliefs were, and always will be, perfectly correct. And there may be a reason why people in the 1770s did not subscribe to a theory published some 83 years after that declaration was signed, but I can't quite put my finger on it. You know what else they didn't believe in? Nuclear physics. So, by your logic, I guess the bombing at Hiroshima never happened. The Bible tells us that God created man in his own image, male and female, he created them. And I believe that, Mr. Speaker. I believe that God created the known universe, the earth, and everything in it, including man. That's fine. You're allowed to believe whatever you want. That's the great thing about living in a free society. People can have different beliefs. But, so far, there is no evidence supporting the belief that a divine being created the world, or even the existence of such a divine being. Your book contains claims with no evidence to back it up. This one has observations and conclusions drawn from those observations. Which would be a more accurate process in determining reality? And I also believe that someday scientists will come to see that only the theory of intelligent design provides even a remotely rational explanation for the known universe. But until that day comes, and I have no fear of science, I believe that the more we study the science, the more the truths of faith will become apparent. If science proves something, then faith is not needed. Science relies on evidence, faith is belief without evidence. If evidence is provided, faith will no longer be necessary. If there is evidence for your particular God, or honestly any God, then I would have to accept it. But it would be through evidence, not faith. I would rather be proven wrong than live in ignorance. So if you have any evidence of any kind of intelligent designer, please present it. Until then, I have no reason to think there is one. I just would humbly ask, as new theories of evolution find their ways into the newspapers and into the textbooks, let us demand that educators around America teach evolution not as fact, but as theory. What new theories? There is no new theory about the diversity of life. Evolution through natural selection is, and I'll be honest, currently the only theory to have any support or evidence behind it. Yes, minutia and details about it have come along to correct misconceptions about the timeline, but the basic idea that mutations will occur and the best able to survive will survive to pass on those mutations has not changed a bit. If a new and better theory comes around that is supported by evidence and does a better job of explaining biodiversity, then yes, that should be considered. But let's also bring into the minds of all of our children all of the theories 
about the unknowable that some bright day in the future, through science and perhaps through faith, we will find the truth of from whence we come. I am also interested in the truth. However, the best way to get to the truth is through facts and evidence. We have evidence of changes in species. Your claims have no evidence behind them. We can't just assume that what we want to be true is true, and there's no guarantee that the universe will conform to our predispositions. As I said before, if you want to believe, you can believe whatever you want. But when you are saying you should be able to use government resources and public schools to indoctrinate kids to your belief system as a valid explanation of biodiversity that has no evidence behind it, that's unacceptable. All right, are we done now? I don't know why I sent this guy. I mean, yeah, he's a congressman, but he isn't doing that much now, is he? Okay, he was a governor. True, a little scary, I guess, but still. Wait, vice what? All right, all right, just relax. He's only going to be vice president as long as the actual president isn't some kind of thin-skinned, egotistical, unqualified, narcissistic buffoon who thinks things like selling mediocre steaks at the sharper image is a good business practice, things should be fine. What? What? As long as the actual president isn't some kind of unqualified Oompa Loompa-esque, narcissistic, thin-skinned, egotistical, xenophobic, fraudulent, war crime proposing, science denying, reality star blowhard. <laughs> <laughs> too much? Yeah, maybe a bit too much. <laughs>